see anything. I just bought a bunch of sausages and they're coming out of my pocket. Giggity. Um, literally, I have a bunch of sausages in my pocket. I'm not just saying that. I was just thinking the other day how lucky I am to live in the U.S. It's so crazy how much we have. You look at all these houses around here, all this land. We all live in our little mansions. We have a lot of stuff, but we have a lot of debt. I mean, most of us. If you, unless you step outside of the matrix and really look at what you're doing and take a really solid look, if you are just impulsive, you can have a lot of crap and just look really good, but they call that, you know, having a big hat but no cattle, where you can just drive around a Ferrari if you want. I mean, you could, if you just looked at it as, uh, well, can I make the monthly payments? Well, dude, you could have so much crap doing that. You could live in a $600,000 house pretty easily. This culture, you know, we have a lot of stuff, but we shouldn't really. The American culture is very rich, but we've, but our system has kind of en enabled us to have more than we should. So it's really a facade. You look around and things aren't as they seem. I mean, all these houses are beautiful, but I mean, these people are slaves unless they own their house. And I am included in that. Don't think I'm like, oh, high and mighty over here with no debt. However, my house is my only debt. It's still a gigantic debt. And if I was living completely within my means, I would have a much, much smaller house, I would say. I would pay cash for a smaller house as opposed to having a big old three-car garage here in the U.S. here in the top 1% of the world. That is crazy. This weird kind of system where all based on how we look and unfortunately uh, that makes us really poor people we're rich but we are owned by our debt and uh, it's not good I don't think some of the other countries have all of these loans and crap that you can get so easily so if you're not a disciplined person here in the US although you make I don't know what people make on average, probably 40,000, 30 or 40,000. If you make that number, uh, in any other country you would be living like a king. And basically you would be living like a king only because you wouldn't borrow so much. I don't know where this came from, all this borrowing. Man, I got a credit card. i tell you guys a story. I got a credit card when I was 19 years old, I think. I think I was 19 or 20. I think I was 20. And I was living in Boise, a little duplex. And I told myself, I'm just gonna get this credit card, build credit, I'm just gonna pay it off every month. And back then, that was so stupid and dangerous because I could, I was living paycheck to paycheck back then, barely making it to the next two weeks. And I was going to school full time at a, couple of really bad influences back then that kind of showed me hey you can buy whatever you want just throw it on this card you know they would just go out a weekend and just hit the store and just start buying crap long story short I uh, maxed out my credit card and then instead of living paycheck to paycheck I was living uh, in the red every month finally got that thing paid off after getting my tax return back and that was when it happened. That's when I cut that credit card up, that's when it clicked with me. I was like, I am so sick and tired of being a uh, slave to the lenders. It's not a cool thing at all. Again, I'm not saying I'm completely out of the matrix because I'm not, trust me. But um, if you break out of the matrix and you have access to your massive amount of money that you bring in, I, how the crap could you want for anything here in the U.S.? Even in my little duplex, I was totally content there if it weren't for the living conditions. I had a little whiny, whiny neighbor that I couldn't do anything. They would complain, call the cops on me and crap. 
so I got it out of that little duplex. But other than, you know, the horrible neighbors I had, I wouldn't have tried to add too much to that. I was pretty content. I just wanted to keep it going, you know. And that's how I am with my current house. I just, I keep everything nice. I keep everything, you know, functional. And um, other than that, I'm content. You know, I, there are things that um, I definitely wouldn't mind having, but I'm saving that for when I have the house paid off. And that's how I feel about debt. If you, if you pay off your house and you can buy things with cash, then boom, you got it. But um, if that's not the case, then why the crap would you put debt on top of other debt? That makes no sense to me. Unless your house caved in or something. And it was absolutely necessary. Don't get me wrong. Again, I'm not complaining or anything like that, but we... There, was, there were times in my childhood where we were broke, super broke. So if you have it good your whole life, I think you expect to have it good all the time, even if you don't have the means. Man, that's why I kind of feel bad for my daughter, because she's an only child. Not Nothing against the only childs out there if you have really good parents that are really on top of discipline, but... Man, if you have an only child, you gotta be on top of that discipline. Otherwise, they will think they own the world. They are owed the world. I think that that was definitely good to have brothers growing up to. Pretty much my whole life, I've had it pretty decent because I lived in the United States my whole life. So I really did have it good, even when I was poor. It's not like I was going to fetch water in buckets and then balancing it on my head to walk two miles to my hut and chased by a couple of lions on the way back. That never happened. I can't hear myself talk right now. The wind is pretty loud. Anyways, catch you later. See ya. His name is Racer Red. If he wasn't riding, he'd be in bed. He naps during the day. He rides his love in garage bays. Oh, he rides all night, full throttle all the time. Oh, he was born to ride. Red Racer, like, comment, and subscribe.